Hey guys, what is up? It is Pizza of Prestige, and I'm back again with Park Miranda. And in this video, we're gonna be uh, well finishing and constructing the rest of the entrance area. And I really like the fact that li like this turned out exactly well, not exactly as I thought about it in my head, uh, but kind of like I planned it to be. And the thing is, I in the first like um, in the first hour of building, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna copy exactly what uh, there is in uh, the actual uh, Miranda Castle and I found out you know with <laughs> with the Planet Coaster pieces and my imagination and just you know my creativity with the pieces it's pretty hard to actually copy it so I thought you know what I'm just gonna kind of like just wing it and see where we end up and I think it worked out okay you know I'm pretty happy with how it turned out in the end uh, some of you who follow me on Twitter might have seen uh, some pictures of the actual final product of the entrance area and uh, if you haven't seen it yet you can check it out or you can just watch the rest of the video or just skip through it whatever you like most um, but you know I was trying to still base it off of the actual building you know I have some dormers right here on the top of this wall uh, that I'm building right now and uh, you know, just keep the numbers the same. Some <laughs> some numbers actually differ, like the number of windows or the, the type of windows that are there. Um, but that's just because, you know, not all the windows are available in the game. And it's just really hard to get the measurements exactly right as to, like, how it is in real life and how it is in Planet Coaster. And so I'm just kind of giving it my own spice and just, yeah, I think, I think this is going to be good, you know, in the end. So as you can see here... This wall, I'm not really sure uh, what I was trying to go for here. I just wanted to add as much detail as possible while not making it look too silly. And the thing is that these kind of uh, castle wall roof dormer extensions kind of things. I'm not really sure what the optics are actually called. Um, but, you know, they're pretty majestic up front, on the front. But I just wanted those simple ones. So I decided, you know what, let's just turn them around. And put the entire detailed area or part of the thing that uh, you know the, the the developers built. Let's put that on the inside of the roof, and let's you know cover that. And then on the outside, the simple back part of it, you know the uh, the back face, we'll put our own windows. And it actually turned out pretty nice. Now I was just trying to go for a little more here. I think these dormers on the top are a little bit too tall. You know, they go all the way to the top of the roof. I'm not really sure if I want to keep it that way. Uh, but for now, this seems fine. Just trying to place it next to it, you know, next to the tower. What I do see is that the tower is kind of a little bit of a different... It's Of course, it's a different texture than the rest of the walls, but it's also a different color scheme. It's more whitish and more, well, more light gray. And I'm not sure if I like that. The thing is, with Planet Coast, you can do the, the multi-select thing, and I could just select all the walls and change their color. But I'm not sure if I want to keep it at this, you know, because right now it's kind of popping out and it really looks like there's a white tower uh, and it kind of draws the intention. Of course, in a moment when we start building the little roundabout section right in front of the entrance, uh, you can actually see like the path that leads to the entrance. It's it's going straight toward the tower. And so the tower is already you know, like the main object in your view. And then it's also a different color. So it might be a little too much to like stand out from the rest of the building. Um, but I'm not sure. So, yeah, if you guys have any ideas about that, go ahead and comment. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do with that. You know, it's... Uh, I'm not that experienced <laughs> right now. I took a long break, and you can actually see that in some of the things, you know. Some things might look hideous. If you think, like, well, this could be better in a different way, go ahead and say, you know. It's, uh, it's all good and fun, and uh, I hope to make this as good as possible, uh, like, for my standards. Right here, you can see me make the little roundabout section and this was actually pretty difficult I wanted to make a path that leads up to um, the tower like that like the, the little piece that I put there uh, but I actually found out that you can't de delete your um, part entrance of course so you have to place another one and then you can delete the old one and it turned out fine you know just adding some curbs on this path right here um, now you know, with the grass texture, I think this actually looks pretty cool. I was trying to go with, you know, making it like just a giant big castle uh, for the entrance. Like that's that's totally around the path. But I thought, you know, that might be a little too much. So I decided let's just put a pond here. And behind that pond, we'll just put a lot of foliage, some uh, some starting of the forest. Because, the re you know, uh, the real castle Miranda is actually built like in a forest. And it's kind of this clearing and there's just this, this massive castle there. And that's kind of what I wanted to go for here as well, you know, the park, it's not going to be all castle themed, 
um, but like the main entrance is gonna be this castle and the park is just built behind it so you know of course the forest is cut away but around the park around the perimeter of the park there's gonna be a lot of trees and there's just gonna be so many trees uh, and so much foliage that you know you can't see right through it and you don't see the giant planes uh, behind it because that's you know that's kind of my main concern with these parks and also in roller coaster Tycoon 3 that was like a big concern of me like of mine um just that when a peep walks through the park or you try to record some pov uh footage of the park and you see these giant empty planes like behind uh these flatlands you know behind your rides or behind your park it just looks really weird and misplaced and it, it doesn't really look that good and i thought you know what I'm, that's not gonna happen to me this time so I'm going to try to fill it up as much as possible with some realistic stuff and we'll see, you know, how that goes. Now, if you do have any tips about that, you know, or how to add foliage to the edge of your park, I'm happy to hear it. I think um, the main inspiration for it I got was from Silverette. He does this a lot, you know, when um, making the edges of the park or the edges of the ride basically just kind of blends it in and with the foliage, it's just, it just looks pretty nice. So I'm going to try to do something like that. And right here, I wanted to add a little different building. This this inspiration for this building actually came from one of my own urban exploration uh, videos and also, um, you know, experiences just for me. Uh, I do make some, you know, like the urban exploration videos. I have made some. Uh, it's basically where you go into abandoned buildings. So you take pictures and you just walk around and really get the, the ambience feel, you know. It's, it's sometimes it's really powerful just the feeling that you get from being in a place that has been abandoned for about 50 or 60 years and I we went uh, well me and my best friend or one of my best friends actually uh, we went to um, we went to an abandoned monastery somewhere in the Netherlands and when we were there there was this wall that was pretty cool it was kind of there was this courtyard and you know uh, on the side of the the building there was a structure uh, similar to this one and it had the arches and stuff and then you just walk on the inside and you know you could just lean on the wall right there where I put the railings on the inside and you could look out over the courtyard and it was it was just really special you know it was really beautiful just standing there and I thought you know what I gotta do that here and I decided let's put some information kiosks uh, right here I put four in a row and uh, the thing is um, you know normally you go into the park and you go to the side to the, you know um, to buy your ticket and then you get to the actual entrance but right now the entrance is before you actually get to the ticket booths and these are supposed to be like ticket booths so you buy your ticket here if you haven't already done that by internet or something like that you know if you don't have your e-tickets ready uh, you just go here and then you can go straight into the park and enjoy the rides and what I thought uh, you know while doing the rest of this video uh, in a moment I'm not sure if you can actually see that but in the top left uh, there's gonna be some notifications about people that are thinking about quitting and the thing is my game is still running as you can see right now it's the 16th or now it's the 17th of October in year one and at the end of this video it's gonna be somewhere in year two and I don't want to end up like my roller coaster tycoon 3 park where I just ended up in like year 20 or something like that and then with coasters that are very old they become less popular and I'm not sure if that you know that mechanic is still in this game is also in this game but I don't want to risk it so I'm gonna play a lot on the pause mode so you won't be able to see anything move at all um, but sometimes you know for just some cinematic shots or some uh, some cool real time lapses like when not building but just time lapses of the structures and uh, the air around it the sky and whatever um, you know then I'm of course gonna unpause it but for most of the construction I'm just gonna pause the game from now on and uh, hopefully not end up somewhere very far in the future and I hope uh, that will help because now they're actually if I'm uh, correct there are two store clerks that have already uh, said bye-bye to the park and just quit their job and I think it generates automatically like it you know it hires new ones automatically or maybe you have to do that manually I'm not sure about that I'm gonna have to look that up and I'm gonna have to screw around with it a little bit uh, but we'll see how that goes now right here just adding a little more wi uh, some more windows um, to the main structure and I decided let's take that like great triangle that we took uh, like in the first episode we put it on the tower let's let's take that out you know it was reflecting and it just didn't look anything as good uh, as the rest of the tower it wasn't textured so I thought you know what let's just remove it and let's place a little bit of a uh, tiny window there and it worked out fine now here just adding some tiny little elements to uh, while well, trying to add some tiny little elements 
two of the ticket boots, you know, some little hanging baskets with some flowers, just to make it look a little more alive. I'm also gonna add some, like, uh, window flower boxes later, and I think those do a great job of, like, making the place feel more alive. I don't want, I like, like I said in the first episode, I don't want, I don't want this, wow. I don't want this to become, like, a very creepy park. Uh, or a very cre uh, creepy entrance. It has to give this warm feeling, you know, this, this welcoming feeling, like, welcome to the park. And I think right now it actually does that, especially with these flowers. I think they work out great. Uh, one thing, though, the back of this building, like I said at the beginning of the video, it's still missing. I'm not going to build that in this video. I think I'm going to do that off camera because it's just going to be simple walls and stuff. You're not really going to see that from inside the park. You know, it's going to be the scenery around the path uh, right at your location. And you won't be able to see the back of the entrance building too much. I hope you can see the tower from afar. But I think that the other structures in the park will kind of drown that out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to go with a little bit of planning. Uh, when building this park, I actually have a drawing right here, uh, right in front of me, of what I want Park Miranda to be. And I only have, like, the the Main Street area drawn and also um, the first, uh, basically, junction uh, where you go right. And then I have this little area drawn out. And I'm not really sure if it's going to be like I, uh, like I actually have drawn it here. Um, but it's basically going to be, like, I hope uh, it's going to be, like, a pond in the middle. And then around that pond is going to be... A railroad and a path and the path is gonna be on the inside and the railroad is gonna go with bridges uh, a little a little bit elevated and it's gonna go all the way around the, um, the pond basically and then it's gonna turn back around and go around the outside of the park and then uh, come back uh, like to the site of the entrance building basically so there won't be a train station at the main street but there will be a train station all around the park so you can always get onto the train. Uh, so, you know, it's just, my mind is just blown about, uh, like, with the possibilities in this game. Um, I really hope I can make this work. I might post this actually on Twitter. I think I am going to do that. Uh, just, uh, like, the drawing that I made right here. Um, I'm going to make a picture of it, you know, put it on Twitter. If you would like to see it, go ahead and check it out. It's at Dotsy Brian. The link to my Twitter is also in the description down below. You can follow me on there and get the latest news of what I'm doing, you know, when I'm uploading videos or uh, when I'm working on the park. You can see some little previews of it. Uh, spoilers, of course. <laughs> but I don't think that matters much, you know. Just seeing a picture and seeing the time lapse are two different things. Uh, some of you might, you know, want to just skip right through the video and see the end. Um, that's of course also possible, but if you're here, thanks for watching and thanks for sticking with me. <laughs> that's just awesome. All right, so uh, a couple of things about the foliage. I <laughs> this is actually the first time that I used the topiaries. I hope I said that right. If I didn't, that would sound like a cheese ball, I think. Uh, but the topiaries are basically just the bushes that have been trimmed to perfection, and I really like the way that you can actually make these into hedges, as you can see right there, while well, you can't really see it. it. was just in the shot right there, a little roundabout with the red flowers in the middle, that little hedge. I really like the fact that, you know, it's not as weird as I thought it would be. I really thought, you know, using the topiaries, it would look very strange. Uh, in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, I hated them. Well, not really hated, but I didn't like them at all. You know, I didn't like the look of them. I just never really used them, and now, Planet Coaster, you know, let's do something different. Let's work with the new materials and see where we end up. And I think it's really paying off. I really like this game and I'm really liking, you know, just being back. I just came out of a call with a couple of people and, um, you know, it's just the community is so welcoming. It's just, I don't know, I haven't really experienced this with another game before. You know, Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, I guess it was just as, well just as cozy and just as nice you know the it's basically the same people but the thing is you know this game is just it's it's gotten so big there's so many people that are enjoying this and i also saw a uh, challenge mode let's play um i'm not sure who it was but i'll put it in the description it was pretty awesome uh i must say because i you know you don't see that a lot you see a lot of people just doing these sandbox parks uh like the one i'm doing right now um, <laughs> I must say, I'm probably not that good at uh, the actual gameplay, you know, the actual park management. I'm not sure if I'm going to be good at that. I think I can figure it out, you know, just playing it along and see where we end up. And I think, you know, we'll be fine if I do that. But it's it's also, you know, it's a lot of fun to watch someone uh, just, just screw around with it and just, you know, find out how the game actually works. You know, where the, what the, do the guests like? Um, 
what kind of rides do they like, how to build the ride so that your guests like it more, and that there are more guests in the park. How do you keep them happy? How do you, you know, put stalls everywhere? The toilets, of course, are very important. Um, just, you know, some little things to take care of in this game, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but I'm gonna stick with the sandbox for now. Now, right here, you can actually see me fill it up a little bit around the back with foliage. I put some, um, some giant bushes there and then some trees behind it. I really like the color of those oak trees, you know, that's kind of dark. And I really like it, you know, it's really obscuring the view, and it's not as fake green as the rest is. Um, but yeah, I think I, <laughs> I think I'm actually happy with how this entrance area right here, the front of the area, actually turned out. I'm gonna do the back uh, off camera, as I said, and um, yeah, in the next episode, we'll be working on the start of Main Street, and it's gonna be pretty exciting, I hope. Uh, so I hope you guys are ready for that now, just to finish it off a little time lapse video, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace from Pieces of Prestige.